Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today I'm going to be testing out some My Mary Blue watercolors. I got a bunch from the company to try out and I want to see if they're worth the hype. So I'm going to be putting them in a palette and then swatching them and painting with them and we're going to see if they are, like I said, worth the hype. So let's jump in and get started. Okay friends, so today I am going to be testing out these My Mary Blue watercolors and I'm going to be putting them into this plastic palette. I get asked about this palette a lot. I got it off Amazon for like 10 bucks. It's plastic, it's portable, it's great. Um, I have a few of them so that's what I'm using today. And I am putting the wet paint into the, the tubes, into the palette, and I'm going to let them dry overnight. I find you use way less watercolor, like paint when it is dried and then reactivated with water rather than using it straight out of the tube wet. Big tip for beginners as well, just don't use it wet straight out of the tube. You tend to pick up a lot more and you really don't need a lot with watercolor. So that's my tip for that. And the reason why I have candles is because I filmed this on my phone during a blackout <laughs> because I wanted to desperately put them in a palette for them to dry so I could use them soon. That's why there's a moody lighting, but the rest of the video is not like this. Anyway, the order in which I put my paints in is always like the color of the rainbow. I kind of just have a spot for them. I start with my yellows into my reds or oranges, then reds, then pinks, then purples. Then that little side piece, I usually put all my greens, which I only got one green. And then I go into blues and then indigos and paints grays and then browns and blacks. That's just how I do it, but you are allowed to set up your palette however you like. Whatever feels comfortable, that's just how I do it though. Okay, so we're gonna let these dry overnight and then tomorrow, in like one second, we are going to swatch them and test them out. Okay, so these are all the colors in the palette. You can see I kind of use them just a little bit. My son was in here painting with me, <laughs> but I'm gonna swatch them for you and tell you the colors. Um, and then we're going to paint something. So I'm just painting on my Academy watercolor block and we're just going to jump right in. So let me wet them up first just so they're all nice and activated. Fun, fun. Um, now I am not one to really t be able to tell too much of a difference between professional watercolors. Um, I am not really a huge fan of granulating watercolors. So we're going to see if there's some granulating watercolors in this, um, but I'll give you my overall feel of how I think they are, <laughs> I guess, as we go. So this first one is yellow van vandium. I don't know how to say that, which is kind of like, reminds me of like a yum, a yellow. <laughs> oh, I'm on a good, good start. Uh, lemon yellow is what I'm trying to say nice and bright. Then I have primary yellow here, which kind of reminds me of like a cadmium yellow. I'm just going to tell you how I feel they kind of relate to other colors. Actually, I'm going to turn my lights down so you guys can see just a bit better. Okay, hopefully that's a bit better. Then next up I have cadmium, cadmium yellow deep. So this is supposed to be a cadmium yellow, but I'm getting like a an orange vibe from this, which is a little confusing. Like I know usually a cadmium yellow is a bit more on the warmer side, but this just feels like an orange. So that's interesting. And I don't tend to use orange very much in my palettes, but I don't know. Then we have yellow ochre, which I love. I always have a yellow ochre in my palette. It's one of my staple colors, I feel. But if you don't have one, you could always mix your yellow with um, a darker like violet like a dioxazine and that also kind of gives you a yellow ochre okay so we have that and then next up we have orange lake again so yeah this is a bit more orangey than that but I would tend to gravitate a bit more towards that one I don't know so there's orange lake then we have permanent red light which just feels like a very warm red. It's a bit more on the orangish 
side, which I don't tend to go for very often because I feel like you can mix an orangey red by just adding a bit of yellow. The reds I tend to go for a bit more are like those deep kind of cherry reds. So this one, let's see what this one is. This was is the this one is quinacridone red. It doesn't feel very intense. Like I'm trying to get as much pigment as I can. Quinacridone red. It's kind of um, underwhelming this one. Now keep in mind that uh, my Mary Blue has like a huge range of colors. Uh, this is not all of them. This is just the ones that I was given, which I am so thankful for. Um, but that's kind of an underwhelming red. I would like more of like a really intense red. But then we also have, what is this? Primary red magenta. So this is, I'm guessing more of a pink. Like if I were to have a red in my palette, I would go for more of a pink because you can just add like the tiniest bit of yellow to this and it'll be a bit of a more intense red. But that's really nice. That, what is it? Primary red magenta. I like that color. That's nice. Then next up we have Quinacridone Lake, which reminds me of Windsor Newton's magenta. And then we have quinacridone violet reddish, which is a bit more purpley. It feels a little bit close to this one, but it's still nice. Okay, then I'm gonna move over down the line here. We're gonna go to green. I only got one green color, which if you guys know me, I love my greens. Um, so I was a little like, oh. And this one is green gold, which is probably one of my least favorite greens. But using this, I know I can mix a lot of other greens. So that's that's okay. I would just have to mix my greens when I use this palette, which I'm totally okay doing. Um, but because I like convenience colors, especially greens, because I do so much florals, do so many florals, um, I really like having a bunch of different varieties of greens for convenience, but if I have to mix them, I will mix them. And green gold is so interesting because the lighter of the value you get, it's more of a yellow, and then the darker, it's more of like an olive, so that's always interesting. And then we have turquoise cobalt, which I know a lot of people love this color. Every time I show this, I have the Winsor Newton similar version, um, and people always go nuts for this color which is nice. Now, as we're getting into the blues, I know that blues tend to be a bit more granulating. So I'm curious to see if some of these colors granulate. Then we have turquoise green. That's a nice bluish turquoisey color. And then we have Cerulean Blue, which is probably one of my least favorite blues. It is the perfect sky color, but I have almost ever never really used it for a sky, to be honest. I'm just not a fan of it. I always find it a little overwhelming and kind of just, uh, I don't know, like a boring blue to me. This is not my favorite kind of blue. And just looking at it right now, just using it, it seems like it's a bit granulating. And so is this Cobalt. What is it? Turquoise cobalt. Cobalt. I tend to like the more solid colors where you don't see a lot of that texture and granulation. But that's just my own preference. Then we have Prussian blue. Which is a nice dark blue. Which I never really added to any of my palettes. But it's always a good option for dark blue. I feel like indigo can be kind of close depending on the brand. So I've never felt the need for a Prussian blue. But looks okay. Um, then we have Ultramarine Deep. I love a good Ultramarine. But again, Ultramarine is a very granulating color in almost every brand that I've experienced. So I'm curious to see how granulating this is, if it is at all. I could look on the back of the tubes. I just realized that because um, they always do have the specifications, which I will look at in a second. Um, 
to see. But let me know in the comments if you are a fan of granulating colors or not. I, I'm not. Really? Sometimes I feel like it's it's fun to use, but I, I don't know why. I'm just not the biggest fan. Okay, then we have Cobalt Blue Deep, which I love a good Cobalt Blue, too. It's very similar to Ultramarine. It's just like a little bit lighter. And then I have Payne's Gray. Which, depending on the brand, can be a bit more on the blue side sometimes. This doesn't seem too blue, which is nice. It's more of a grayish, like a, just a cool gray. And then the last one we have is a black, which is carbon black. Which is black. <laughs> I don't always know the difference between all the blacks. I know some are just like not as intense, but... I feel like if I'm going for a black, I like a more intense black. But yeah. Okay, so those are all the colors I got swatched. Um, they're at first glance. So this is the thing about me and, you know, colors, like different brands of professional colors. I can't tell a huge difference. Like if you were to put like this yellow ochre beside my Daniel Smith or my... Um, Windsor Newton. I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference really which is which. Um, they do seem nice. I'm a little underwhelmed with the two reds, the um, quinacridone red and the permanent red light. Not a huge fan. I just like more, like I said, cherry kind of intense reds. Um, but I do know that they have tons of other colors. So looking at the blues, I told you there would be granulation and I can definitely see it a lot in our cerulean and our ultramarine and cobalt and then that turquoise so let's just check the back so it does have all the specifications right right i think yes okay so there's a little bit is um it has the pigment number so pb28 g for granulating and st for staining so it gives you the specs on the tubes, which is nice, but yes, definitely granulating. And I expected that a little bit. Um, my question to you guys who do like granulating paints, when it comes to mixing, it, it's just so much more difficult because they do have that separation. Is that something you like? Is that something you don't like? Um, I'd love to start a conversation and I am planning to do a video on like what is granulation because I feel like a lot of us who begin painting, we get some of these colors and we go, what's wrong with them, <laughs> right? We think that there's something faulty in them. We just don't know a lot. And I still personally don't know a lot about it, um, which I want to figure out. But yeah, so that those are the swatches. I want to just try and mix a few greens just because greens are my thing. Um, and then we will play around and paint something. So let's let's see what kind of greens I can make with this. So I'm going to grab a bunch of this green gold just because I feel like it would be a better way to mix than just using yellow, just because it already has that little tint of green in there. And we're gonna mix them with diff some different blues. See what we get. Now, when you mix with a granulating color, such as ultramarine, you're gonna get that separation. But that's a pretty nice color. That's pretty. So there's that. If we do like the turquoise or the, is it turquoise green? You get a more vibrant, kind of like an emerald. Um, let's try the Prussian blue, because that's a nice dark, dark green or dark blue. And then I want to get a bit more of that green gold. And this kind of produces kind of like a sap green, which is nice. And then let's try just for kicks, eh, like cerulean. I don't think, I don't know if that's going to be a good mix. Yeah, underwhelming. I don't love cerulean blue. I just don't have the need for it. 
what color is your favorite blue? Let me know in the comments. I'd, I'd love to know what your go-to blue is. And then, you know what? I'm going to mix some with Payne's Gray. Because I feel like that would darken it. But still have that olive -y tone to it. Maybe a bit darker. Just like really darkens it up. And then I want to try and create like a really dark kind of foresty green. So I'm going to go with this one, which was the turquoise, to make it vibrant. Um, a bit more of the green. And then I'm going to neutralize it with a bit of the red. But which red should I go for? I'm going to go for the magenta, primary magenta, just because... I feel like <clears throat> it's the most intense. I'm not getting the most intense mixes here, but I it's definitely something I'd have to play around with a bit more. Maybe a bit more of the blue. Either way, I love mixing. There we go. That's a bit more of what I'm looking for. That dark foresty color. You could always add, I find sometimes purple. Which one did I use the Prussian blue? I think it was this one, right? Add a little bit of that purple color. It really darkens it up. Let's get a bit more of the green gold. A bit more of the blue. And get a nice dark green as well. It's not going as dark as I'd like, but that's okay. I would love to try some of their greens. But yeah, you can definitely mix a nice variety of greens like that. Okay, so now that I have all these green mixtures, <laughs> let's paint something. I want to paint some florals just because that's that's my jam and I love doing that. So I'm just going to turn my paper around and I'm going to use one of my new brushes which is coming out soon, this um, half inch stroke brush. And I just want to kind of play with some of these colors. I will have more information on these brushes soon, but for now, just watch as I play with these colors and let me know in the comments what you guys think of them. And there we go. There's an extremely loose kind of floral play with my My Mary Blue watercolors and my new brush set that's coming out. I will let you know more details when I have them. But yeah, so overall, I think 
I mean, I don't know if I see too much of a difference between my go-to palette, which is my Winsor & Newton paints, or even my Paul Rubens tubes. Um, they are beautiful colors, but I think they're just as good as other um, professional watercolors. I don't see a huge, huge difference um, that would make me, you know, just want to switch all together. So I don't know if that was helpful or not, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, guys. Bye.